is this something that Dr. Jose Delgado talked about? Well, and who who was he, and and what specifically did he um, work on? Uh, Dr. Jose, Jose Delgado. Delgado. He was look known, him up, Austin. He was known as the father of brain chips, and so he okay. was from Yale University, uh, um, and he did a lot of brain experimentation uh, stuff that is unethical. We wouldn't allow today per se. Um, but we made progress of understanding the brain. He would actually wire up people. He, his most famous experiment was with the bull. Uh, he could make a, he implanted bull with a radio frequency chip and he could make a bull stop from charging by pressing a button. And that impressed everybody quite a bit. Wow. But that, that's using brain chips and- Where was just, he, was he in, a, in the United States? Yeah, no. Yeah. But you don't need chips there, anymore. Okay, this is him with the bull. Yeah, there he is. Dr. Jose Gildada, uh, Delgado steps into the Spanish bull ring as a bull demonstration of his research. A risky behavioral control demonstration. Wow. And he was working with the government? Uh, he had a famous quote, didn't he? Yes, he did. Let's see if you can bring up the quote. Mankind does not have a right to develop his own mind. Austin, pull up his quote. So what was Delgado working? What, what did he do? Where, where was he working from? What Was he working he, he, at one of the universities Yes, here? he was working at uh, Yale Medical okay. School. And he would insert wires into people's brains. And, you know, there's always two sides to this story. Okay, here it is. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. The kind of liberal orientation, this kind of liberal orientation has great appeal. We must electrically control the brain. Someday, armies and generals will be in control by electrical stimulation of the brain. Hmm. And that was in the 60s, I believe. Whoa. So That's we, heavy. We've come a long way since. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he was, if people were openly talking about that in the '60s, where are we now? And where are other nations like China and Russia and Iran? And uh, we we boycotted recently, like over a hundred countries from doing uh, companies in China because they were working on mind control technologies. So, uh, you, you know, it's very much out in the open. But it's just people don't want to recognize their soul, so to speak, can be touched. Their very ego, their sense of self can be altered. They're not in control of their own emotions. That means if you don't have free will or autonomy or choice, democracies don't exist. That means religions don't exist. That means a whole bunch of things. Markets are can be shaped moved up or down at will based on people's preferences it's total domination of the world <laughs> that's how important and why it's kept so secret it's i think it's the uh, it's the ultimate weapon because if you can control the people with their fingers on nuclear weapons you're one step ahead so this is uh, this is kind of the end game uh, is full control of the human mind and at scale at scale, of, that's right, of the world. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to even wrap my mind around. It is. Something bigger than yourself is always hard to imagine. Uh, and so that's why the monkey brain experiments that they were doing at, at uh, Duke, uh, we can't fathom what us three, if our brains were connected at the speed of thought, could come up with or think about. We have to use vibrations from our throat deciphered through our brains uh through our ears and then um and talk you know it's kind of an outdated form of communication amongst brains well i mean think about it. if something like Neuralink actually came onto the market as a consumer product that people could get this this neural net put inserted into their brain and they could give them the ability to uh learn new skills instantaneously or download books within seconds or like the the advantage economically would be astounding yes and 
more and more people would adopt this in order to compete just in, like, in yeah. order to compete but the scale like so what would be so the downside of something like this is once you have this it would be no problem you would almost assume that the government would be, would be able to control have s some level of control over this it would have to and that's why they're kind of experimenting what are the potential downfalls uh we have a term of mind viruses how how do memes pass mind viruses. viruses uh could you hack if all the minds were connected could you insert a virus that mm. you know might shut down the human race or? that's fascinating you know the, the the term mind virus um i've used that and i've heard it used a lot when it comes to things like QAnon. Are you familiar with QAnon? I heard of them, yes. Yeah. So there's a gr it's basically it's a group of of people online who follow this anonymous poster on these uh these threads, these like uh forums and uh this guy pretends to be like a one, he pretended to be one of Trump's right-hand guys and he would make these anonymous posts talking to all these people and all these people called him Q. And they thought that this guy was real. This guy was one of the people right next to him. He'd make these cryptic anonymous quotes. And there was this, there was this like ex super hyper, um, just like hyper passionate group, political group of people who follow, who are Trump supporters. And they believed that this Q person was going to save them and giving them these directives of what was going to happen next and to be prepared for the storm that's coming and that led to the capital being raided and they find all these little things they find like something trump said during one of his speeches and okay that sentence means this that means we have to storm the capital and they keep finding all these synchronicities online and they think they mean something more humans look for meaning and purpose and uh, we find it in in the strangest places it's mm. like looking at clouds we'll it's, we'll see shapes is it chaos or is it order it almost see it, that i mean if anything seems like a mind virus something like that seems like it's a mind virus but it really affected if you look at the people it affected it affected a certain type of people it affected certain people that were lonely didn't have a lot going on didn't have some sort of larger sense of a community they didn't have big families um it sometimes it was it was like a a woman living alone in an apartment and her kids weren't even living with her anymore um people that just had just sort of like misfits they all had a very similar social life and social intelligence so how would you build if you look at us community the whole human race maybe the planet as a whole organism how would you build an immune system to fight against something like that mm. now i'm i do not believe in censorship myself but how would you stop the flow of a mind virus and so they're experimenting with things like interaction that. with other human beings yeah not through screens not through social media yeah yeah. I feel like the more people are just accustomed to like, uh, again, this is another one of the commonalities between these people is they all their communication with other humans was through a phone or through a computer. They didn't spend time like this having conversations with people and um, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're full of shit. Like, are you serious? But like, like, like having somebody actually poke holes in what they're saying and question what they're talking about instead of it's just, it's, it's just this echo chamber of the same ideas chamber. bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fully agree that it's an echo chamber. Um, there, there are other terms like mimetic viruses, memes that turn mm. into viruses. You're familiar with those uh, that get posted around. Um, and, but you know, it, the the utopia, the kind of end goal that people, the visionaries, see with this technology, they know that transhumanism can't be stopped at this point. Uh, but they want to take the safest route. Um, so a lot of these experiments are unfortunately sacrifices that will help the future generations. Um, and that's kind of their internal marketing ploy of why they must do it. Uh, and, they, and there's a race um, between, you know, the three major countries, uh, who's going to have the best AI, whose culture is going to survive, who's money is going to dominate, whose, you know, language is going to dominate. And, uh, 
So this is very competitive field in the military right now. Who can collect the most mines, the fastest, build the, <laughs> the biggest hive mind network? And so there, my next book is called, it's not published yet, it's called Emergent Minds, um, um, The Birth of a New Species. And that's under the, the three books that I've written of cyber and cybernetic warfare revealed. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be about kind of these architectures, topologies of humans, nodes, uh, computing units, very cold <laughs> the way it's described. But the, I'm trying to bring out the ethics of all this. Um, the human race has to have, a, a discussion and this has to be on the mainstream media uh havana syndrome well what is it they don't seem to care they're hushing it they don't, they don't we know what it is because it's been around so long we know the type of weapons used well there's no financial incentive for them to talk about it either true other than being good reporters <laughs> right but uh, that's not that's not an incentive anymore. no no it's not an incentive anymore <laughs>